something kind of awesome about a site like goodoldgames.com. It's really the only bastion for long lost PC games and it's not uncommon to browse through the online library and come across something that brings you back to the gaming days of old, even if it has to set you back the paltry price of six or so dollars. However, these nostalgic journeys are not always filled with moments of tear-filled reminiscing, as was the case for myself in my revisit to the game Shogo Mobile Armor Division, developed by the former gods of the FPS genre, Monolith Productions. Here's a game that sounds almost flawless on paper. It's a mix of different anime and manga mixed in with the obligatory cyberpunk setting and involving lots of mech on mech destruction and a few on foot levels to break up the tedium. And for the most part, it works. There's a nice variety in the environments, a great arsenal of different weapons to kill things with, and there's even a few areas in the game where you get to make moral choices that will change the final outcome of the game. Though the story's kind of rubbish in that regard, so you'll probably not carry the way. Early on, the game gives you the choice of four possible mechs to use, which are all pretty much identical aside from having different amounts of armor or health. And considering this is a shooting game first and foremost, it seems kind of redundant to not choose the mech with the most armor. There's a few large areas where you can transform into a hovercraft and actually make use of the increased speed benefit, but these are few and far between. But, I mean, it's all pretty damn original for the time, and it was a blast to play back in the day. But as much as it pains me to say this, it's a game that's, well, it's aged like complete shit. The major problem here is the artificial intelligence. The game kind of uses this bizarre critical hit system, which to this day I've still got no idea how it works. Every now and then during a gunfight, seemingly by chance, an attack on an enemy might randomly be a critical hit and restore some life to the player. Now the dilemma here is that it's just completely random and enemies have the same capabilities. Now also consider that the player doesn't have as much health as they do. What this results in is lots of instant kills, to the point that you often don't even see where the hell they are, you just die. I guess it was overlooked back in the 90s, but nowadays it's just fucking cheap. Even on the default setting, this happens way, way too often. It feels like something that they tested out in an early version, didn't implement properly, and then just spilled in with the final product. I mean, old shooting games are meant to be hard, and there's a certain joy derived from playing brutally difficult shooting games, but the difficulty in this is just out of control. It's just so cheap. It really sticks out as something that just drags the gameplay down in so many ways. There's few moments you do go on a tear and absolutely wreak absolute havoc, or always just gun down, literally, in a flash when the AI randomly gets a lucky critical hit off and gives you in a heartbeat. The only way to get through this is just a quick save after every single enemy and quick load when you die. Now, it's not too bad on a modern rig because a quick load can take anywhere from 1 to 2 seconds, but imagine playing this on a Pentium 2, putting up with 10 or so insta deaths each level and staring at the loading screen for 30 seconds each time. That's not fun, right? Also, it doesn't help that the health and armor pickups are extremely inconsistent. They obviously didn't have the budget to playtest some of the harder areas, and it's not uncommon to have an abundance of power-ups when you don't even need them. And then there's what I think is the most poorly designed splash damage system I've ever seen in a video game. Yet, yeah, the splash damage in this game is actually more dangerous than a direct hit. Think about that for a while. And it's a shame too, because for its time, this was kind of a gorgeous looking game with a really cool and unique idea. There's lots of creative particle effects with all the different weapons, and when the enemies aren't stuck in walls, they do show some pretty cool animations, as they writhe around in pain while you unload into them. Also, there's a couple of areas where you have to do fetch missions, but you can be a complete dick if you want to and just kill the NPC responsible for giving you the task, and skip the area completely. Gotta admit, that's kinda cool. Monolith Productions really made some of the best FPS games of the last few generations. They're responsible for the Blood series and Fear, which I still think stands the test of time as an amazing atmospheric shooter with almost balletic gunfights. Shogo, however, is a muddled mess of a game that's going to be extremely hard for a new gamer to pick up and enjoy, without any sort of context. And even then, it's only a matter of time before they give up due to its annoying idiosyncrasies. I really used to love this game as a kid, and I even have fond memories of the multiplayer over our dated 56k internet connection, but looking back, it just doesn't hold a candle next to other FPS games of its time, like Half-Life and Quake 2. Sometimes you have to kind of excuse an older game's shortcomings in light of recent enhancements to the genre, but Shogo is just laden with so many frustrations and gameplay annoyances that it's almost not worth it. Yeah, I said it. Just go play Blood instead. <laughs>